Hey friends and welcome to today's video. I wanted to spend today where we can just sit down as friends and talk about a really important topic, dealing with mom anger. I think if we're honest, we've all been there. We've all done that and it's probably gonna happen again at some point in time. So, you know me, I love talking about just real, raw, honest, heart of the matter discussions. Come hang out, we are going to make my new favorite way to make coffee. It is so delicious, you guys, with this latte I have made here. I'm gonna show you how I make it, share a little special with you guys, and we're gonna sit down and we are going to have a wonderful, loving but meaningful Sisters in Christ conversation today. So. I've got my latte, let me show you how I made it and we can sit down and chit chat. Ready? Let's go. Hey friends, I'm so glad you guys are here with me today. I thought it would be the perfect time to sit down, relax, have a little bit of mama chat time as we talk about something that is just so incredibly important. And it's because we have to get down to the root, the heart of the matter, right? What was Chris constantly saying, you know, everybody was so focused on breaking him down, right? The religious leaders of the time, you know, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this, what about this? And he said, whoa, 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 let's get to the heart. What's the, the, the depth of there? And we're getting ready to start our biblical womanhood series. We do it every summer. You guys, I'm so excited. Cannot wait to get started with you guys. So be sure when you subscribe, tap that little bell notification because you're not going to want to miss out on what we're doing for biblical womanhood. But I want to sit down and just have this like, raw, honest conversation about dealing with mom anger. I think we all face it <laughs> to some degree. So this topic is just so important. I'm so excited to sit down with you guys. Before we do, I want to give a very special thank you to Javi Coffee. You guys, this is amazing. You see this one bottle? Oops, one bottle here. This is a month's worth of coffee ready to go. 30 servings of coffee right here out of this little bottle. Sugar-free, non-GMO, these guys are awesome and I wanna thank them for sponsoring today's video. It's a great company and I, of course, have a special promo code for you guys, 20% off, link down below. Be sure to use that code if you're looking for a quick and easy coffee. This is huge with you iced coffee drinkers and I know there are many of you because iced coffee is the thing. I never quite got iced coffee and so you guys are gonna have to let me know how you guys like to have your iced coffee. I think I'm gonna have to branch out and try it. But I figured today there's no better way than to sit down and relax and have a really important, really deep, meaningful conversation with one another than over a nice latte, right? Like who doesn't want that? I'm not gonna go out and go to Starbucks or something like that and get some kind of like junk coffee with a ton of sugar and fillers and stuff in it. That's why I usually don't go out and get stuff because there's so many options and I don't know what to pick and I don't want all of the junk. I'm gonna make something right here at home. And so Javi not only has these amazing coffee concentrates, literally 30, like 31 or 30, 35, I was wrong, 35 servings in this bottle of coffee in this one little concentrate, no sugar, no fillers, no nothing. They have amazing recipes for um, ice stuff, hot stuff, baking with it. I mean, smoothies, protein drinks, you name it. I'm gonna go ahead and use this one and make a cinnamon maple latte. So let's go ahead and make that real quick. And then we can go take a nice little something warm and delicious to drink, sit outside and have this conversation about the heart of the matter, the deep roots. So let's go ahead and make a quick latte, something yummy and delicious, but healthy at the same time, so we can sit down and we can have a fantastic mama chat. Ready? Let's do it.
so simple and easy. I just love it because like I said, I don't like to go like anytime I go to Starbucks, you know, sometimes the girls will go with my mom and it is fun, but you know, you're just getting so much junk and so many of the places and you don't know what's going into it. I don't want, some, I don't want a bunch of sugar. I don't want all this stuff, but then you have to like learn a whole way to order if you don't, I don't know. So I just usually don't do it is my point. And I love my coffee I have every morning, but I usually don't get adventurous. And like I said, I've never actually done iced coffee. I know a lot of you are really into that. So maybe we'll have to try out some Javi ice recipes next, but this latte is delicious. So simple, so easy. I did use a little bit of maple syrup, but again, it was my maple syrup, right? I can control how much is in here. And for something in the afternoon, I don't have to make it very strong if I don't want it very strong, or if you like really strong coffee, you can go ahead and do that. So again, big thank you to Javi for this. I do have a 20% off discount coupon down in the link below. So if you want a month's worth of coffee concentrate, non-GMO, sugar-free, like ready to go. You guys be sure to check them out. I have another sip of my latte. Mm. Just so easy. That's what I love. All right. I'll probably have to heat it up by the time we get done. Add a little more hot milk to it because we need to talk about mom anger. And I think that we don't see this conversation spoken about very often. And I think there's a few different reasons why. And, and I get that. But it's important. I think it's important to be honest and say, yeah, maybe you're an angry mom. Maybe you have anger stored up that you don't even realize. Maybe you're frustrated in the way that you respond to your children or you get so frustrated, right? I, I know I do that sometimes. I'm frustrated with myself for the way that I'm getting frustrated, right? And then it creates this just vicious cycle where nothing good is coming out of it. We're all faced with different circumstances. Maybe you're really faced with a lot of stuff right now and it is just a lot to process through and deal with. So when we have these times of anger, what do we do? How, how do we go about this? And I want to preface all of this by saying the first time, however many years ago that I sat down and said, okay, I'm reading the whole Bible for myself. I want to read it from cover to cover. What does it say? I remember I stumbled upon this little verse and it hit me like a stack of bricks, right? Like I just was like, oh my gosh, I never thought of it that way. And that was anger, right? Holding on to anger, having that anger in you is like giving a foothold to the devil. And I went, like it, it stopped me dead in my tracks. Maybe for you, you're like, well, yeah, obviously. But for me, it really made me stop and think when I still have bits of anger rooted in my heart, maybe I don't realize it. Maybe I'm just like, well, you don't understand. I'm frustrated. I'm having a hard time. My husband's doing this. The kids are doing this, right? I have all these reasons for why. Yeah, I'm, I'm angry, you know? Maybe it's life's been difficult. Maybe you are struggling in your faith. Maybe whatever the reason is, okay? We, we all have reasons. I understand that. But scripturally where it said, God's word speaking to us, that having that anger in us is literally giving Satan a bit of foundation to hold on to and start working in our lives. I went, oh my gosh, I don't want any anger. And I understand we shouldn't want anger. That's not the only place in scripture that we can go to and be like, yeah, don't hold on to anger. Don't go to bed angry. Don't let, right? don't let the sun go down when you still have anger, work it out with the person. Having, you know, this anger is the same, you know, and, and these bad thoughts and these things that harboring that anger in our heart crisis is the same as going and committing murder. I mean, we can see a million times over and over, okay? But for some reason, that scripture hit me because I go, if I'm trying to be, be a better follower of Christ, to grow my biblical literacy, to grow my spiritual maturity, to, to live this out and disciple my children and be a light to my husband and, and all of these different things, right? But yet I'm letting anger hide in the deep, dark crevices of my soul that is giving Satan these little footholds or his little claws can just sink in and be ready to go and spread that poison. And like this, like somebody has 
coffee concentrate. And I'm like, well, is it sugar free? Is it non GMO? Right? I want to check all the ingredients and see exactly what it is because I want to know what's going into my coffee. But what about my heart? Am I really checking all of the little, even nooks and crannies and all the little areas to say, hey, what is this? That is literally seeping into my spirit, into my heart, into my mind, coming out through my, my words and my actions. Am I as dutiful to dig into that as I am over here worrying about, you know, if, if Starbucks put too much sugar or some sort of oil into my coffee, right? Like, I, I think we all can do that sometimes, or it's like we have our areas that we're really dutiful about, we make sure, but then it's like, but wait, am I doing the same with my heart, with, with my depth, you know, with what matters? It doesn't matter what's in my coffee at the end of the day when I stand before the Lord, right? It does matter what's in my heart and how my life was lived. And so is there a balance? And so looking at that, I really started to look at what type of mom I was. And of course, I feel like we can apply these principles to marriage, to friendship, to, to, to all aspects of life. But let's just talk about us mamas today, okay? I think of how much I used to yell. I come from a family of yellers guys, we used to joke that my grandmother didn't even know how to speak because she just yelled all the time. Our house was always so loud and it wasn't even that she was angry all the time. It's just like how it was. And then we would yell. It's like everybody kept getting louder to compete with the other loudness. And then I remember my husband just being like, stop yelling. You're so loud. You know? And I'm like, oh, you're right. I hate that. I just yell all the time. My husband brings up when we talk constantly about just fussing. That's what we call it. We've had no fussing challenges. Hi, love. Hi. Mm. And my husband would always say, you're just, you're, you're fussing. And like, I, I, I guess I stopped yelling, but then it just turned to fussing where I'm just, I don't know. I, I don't think of it that way in my head. I'm just going a million miles a minute. And I'm trying to make sure everybody else is like hearing the thoughts that I'm thinking, I guess. Oh, do we do this? What about this? Take care of that. Go do that. Blah, 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 blah. It's just always going. And then I started looking, you know, so I feel like there's some of that surface level stuff. But then I go, what about those areas where I'm literally holding anger? Be it that I think I'm failing my kids and therefore there's some anger. Be it I truly get mad at my kids because they're not doing what I think they should be doing. They are disrespectful. They are this, they are this, whatever. Why am I angry? And I'll do this even sometimes when I'm like, okay, Lord, convict me. Am I holding anger somewhere that maybe I don't even realize? Because I don't want to do that either. Shine a light on that, Lord. Point it out to me so that I can deal with it because I don't want to be harboring anger in any way. I don't want my kids to see me as an angry mom. When my kids look back on their childhood and they tell, you know, my future grandchildren, Lord willing, about their childhood, are they going to talk about a mom that was always angry, busy, frustrated, cranky, never had time, whatever it was? How are my kids going to look back and remember me? When I'm, you know, how does my husband look at me? Does he, does he see me as an angry mom? When we're out and about and, you know, in the grocery store or whatever, it makes me so sad when I see these moms that you can just tell deep down in the heart, they're angry. They're, I mean, what today we, we had to stop by the store on the way home and um, this mom yelled at her child. This kid was maybe three the entire time we were in the store and the whole store could hear it. Yeah. I mean the whole, the whole time, it just was one thing after another. And I have my theories for why we see so many angry moms today. And I really do think that the vast majority of it goes back to the sanctity of marriage and family being broken and, and the system that Satan has so wonderfully destroyed and now leads here today. I really think that's where it goes back to. But then again, I'm like, look at how Satan has destroyed the home and family, which leaves us all angry because things aren't working the way they're supposed to, the way God designed. And now we're all angry, which is giving a foothold to the devil. So it just breeds this bigger and bigger and bigger monstrosity, right? Where Satan's ruined it. We're all stuck into it. We're sold out to a system where we put ourselves first, but now we've let him get a foothold into our lives because we're angry. And it just all breeds and breeds and breeds. So that's my theory. I think that's where it all comes from. But how do we deal with this? How do we, number one, realize that 
we are angry moms or we do have issues in, in little pockets of anger tucked in our hearts that we want to get rid of. We want to clear out. We want to address. How do we change going forward? And how do we make sure that that anger doesn't creep back in? I think this is what matters. Number one, we have to identify it. And maybe for you, this is something you're dealing with and, and praise the Lord that he connected us and brought you here that we could sit down and enjoy a cup of coffee together as friends, even if I'm here and you're wherever you are, but we could sit down and we can have a conversation. So maybe it stands out and you're like, I know, I know I'm struggling with this. I am an angry mom. Maybe you are the mom in the grocery store yelling at the kids all day. I get it. Maybe that is you. And there's no judgment in that, but to say, hey, we all know when you're holding anger, you're harboring anger, that that's not how it is to be. And if you profess to be a follower of Christ, this is the biggest issue, right? It is important. It does matter. Maybe you don't know if you're an angry mom. Maybe that anger is a little deeper and a little more hidden. And that's where I think regardless, right? It may be kind of obvious to you and you may be going, eh, I don't know, Heidi, I don't know if I'm an angry mom. I'm, you know, I'm not angry. I say, let's just all take this week to really keep this a focus on our prayer. Lord, search my heart. Maybe for you, it's not with your kids. Maybe it's in your marriage. Maybe it's in a family relationship, a friendship, whatever it may be, right? Maybe it's somewhere else. Anger gives a foothold to the devil. So maybe we need to spend this week taking it to prayer and saying, Lord, search my heart. Search the deepest, darkest places, maybe even the ones that I've tucked away and I don't even look at or think about anymore, right? That, that suitcase up in the attic that you don't even know the last time you opened it. Where is there anger in my heart that is giving that foothold to the devil? Lord, convict me, show me, pull it out of the attic and be like, it's right here, ready to deal with it. Let, let's do that, okay? So really think about that. And you leave me a comment down below. If there's an area and you wanna be like, yes, please. We're a community here. We're sisters in Christ. Let's lift one another up in prayer. I would love to pray alongside of you in this. Let's do that. This is to be a community. And so leave me a comment if I can pray for you in this. But first we have to identify it. Do your kids view you as an angry mom? Maybe ask them, ask your kids, ask your husband. Do you think I'm angry? Do you think I'm upset a lot? Do you view me as frustrated, cranky, discontent, mad? You know, whatever it might be. We have to identify it. And then once we identify it, we got to figure out why. You never want to just treat the stuff on the top. You got to get to the root. I am battling this hill back here against the poison ivy again because it's so difficult to get all the roots out. And if I can't get all the roots out, I can't get all the poison ivy out. And then back it comes and the whole thing, you know, the whole cycle starts over again year after year. You've got to find the roots. Why are you angry? Are your relationships with your children not good? I think especially older kids, maybe your kids are grown and out of the house and there's still, mm, there's issue there. Why, why is it there? Why are you angry? Why are you frustrated and cranky and mad and discontent and whatever it is that you're dealing with, right? You identified it and prayerfully identified it. And then you have to go, why, why is that happening? Is it because I need to be a little bit better? Hello, love. And there's some flowers taste on my- Oh yeah, don't eat flowers. No, I'm going to Okay, stop off. eating the flowers. Okay. She's apparently eating some flowers she found over there and her dad sent her in the house to rinse out her mouth. Fun times. Why am I angry? And I think when I evaluated this for me, I found a few different things. One, I have struggled most of my time as a mom with being okay with being a mom. And hear me out. Go back and listen to our podcast we did 
Um, if you pull up, I've got a playlist with all our podcasts. We talked about this, um, Sabrina and I, my co-host, about becoming moms as teenagers and kind of having this like lingering feeling like I'm wrong for having children. Um, I love being a mom. I always wanted to be a mom. Like I, I love this. But sometimes I would have this, man, is something right? I don't know. I felt this like, is something wrong because I'm a mom? I became a mom at 17. Like almost like the shame I carried around and it would seed in bits of anger. I found that with me and I had to work through that. Sometimes it was because I just wanted to be too much of a perfectionist. If the kids weren't doing the things exactly like how I thought they should be, if they weren't wearing the clothes I thought they should be, like perfectly put together in this outfit with these shoes and they weren't doing this and they were getting messy and they were da 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 and everything wasn't just picture perfect, I would get frustrated, I would get angry. Maybe my kids are trying to communicate and I haven't really equipped them to do that well. And so the way they're communicating, maybe it's fits or talking back or different little things, I'm now getting angry about. But really it's just, I haven't equipped them with any better way or shown them a better example of how to communicate in those times of frustration or sadness or disappointment. Right, so you start looking at all these different ways, start paying attention in your days and going, why am I angry? I'm noticing that I'm angry, I'm frustrated, I'm getting short, snappy, whatever. Why? And I really started asking myself that. Whenever I would feel these things where I felt like I needed to yell, or I needed to be upset, or I needed to start fussing at somebody or whatever it was, I went, why? And then I'd sit there and I'd really pray about it and go, I am upset right now because I want my child wearing the specific thing because we're getting ready to go to this specific place and I want it to be this way. And she just has to wear a, you know, a tutu and old dirty sneakers or whatever, right? And then I really had to sit there and heart check myself and go, self, that's ridiculous. Why does it matter? Am I truly showing my child the light of Christ when I'm angry at her because she wants to wear shoes that I don't want her to wear? Am I really helping the situation when I'm just getting angry at them when they're just hurt and angry and don't know how to communicate that to me? We have to sit down and we have to dig into why. Maybe it's hurt relationships with older children, right? Maybe it's other things, but we have to sit there and dig into the why, the, the deep rooted stuff. And it's difficult and it's not gonna happen overnight. But if we never start working towards that, you're never going to truly fix the problem. And that leads me to the third part then is, how do we live that out? I need to identify it, I need to find it, I need to figure out why, and then I need to live that out and make changes. And so much of that, I think honestly, just goes back to remembering that if we profess to follow Christ, we believe in the death and burial and resurrection, the soon return of our Lord in our eternity with him. We are to be ambassadors of Christ above all. Yes, I am a mom, but even more importantly than that, I am an ambassador of Christ, mothering children to train up in his ways, in his truth, to go out like arrows in my quiver, right? Into this evil world. And so, if I am not showing my children that Christ-like behavior here in our sanctuary, our safety of home, how on earth can I expect them to go out and do that anywhere else if I'm not even showing it right here in the safety of our own home? How did Christ respond? Do a word search, right? Go through all the scriptures one after another about what it means to be dealing with anger scripturally. I mean, it's like, again, a ton of bricks. You're just like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? But let God's word sink into your heart, sink into your spirit and encourage you and equip you to say, no, I am not letting Satan win this. I am not giving him a foothold. Are you crazy? Get out of here, dude. No way. What does Christ want to see from me? Forgiveness, patience, 
joy, encouragement. That's what he wants me to be. With my children, yes, and and across the, the board. So for me, identifying it, finding the why, and that when I hit those moments that I wanna yell, that I wanna be angry, that dude, I am tapped out, I'm about ready to lose my marbles because it happens. To capture those thoughts, right? Take them captive. So you know what, Lord, this is a you. I'm gonna pray with this child. I'm gonna pray by myself. I'm gonna go give myself a time out. Make myself a latte and sit down and enjoy the birds and just kind of spend some time in silent prayer. And then we can come back and we can talk. When I can get myself mature in the spirit enough that I can pull myself together and then I can come back. All right, I'm here to listen. I'm here to talk. Let's pray together. Let's find a way to work through this an encouraging, loving, forgiving, patient way. And the more we do this, the better we get, right? It's like working out a muscle group. The more I do it, if I actually would do some arm exercises, maybe I'd have some muscle where my fleshy patches currently are, right? But the more you work it out, the better you're gonna get at it. And so the more I started taming my tongue and saying, I will not yell. Oop, I'm fussing, I need to, boop, shush, I'm done. Let me find a way to ask nicely. When I see my kids responding in anger, I go, ooh, I don't want to add fuel to this fire, right? Sweet as honey. Kind words, encouraging words, forgiving words. And the more we start doing this, the better we're going to get. And when we turn away from that wrath and that anger, and we instead respond in patience and gentleness and kindness, we're gonna make a big difference with our children, with our husband, with our homes, with whatever the situation is. And more importantly, with the Lord, because he's very specific in the importance here of dealing with anger and instead repenting from that, turning. And I I, I used to do that, but I'm not doing it now. Now I'm going this way. And to the best of my ability, I am coming with gentleness, with patience, with peace, with kindness. Sometimes I get maxed out. Sometimes I get overstimulated. Sometimes I'm frustrated. Sometimes something's going on with the kids and I'm like, I I am going to lose my mind. And I want to scream and yell and let them have it. I need to be mature enough to be able to go to the Lord and to set that example of those moments will come. They happen. We live in a sinful fallen world. Guys, that's, that's what it is. But I don't have to give in to Satan and let that anger just give him that foothold where I just rip into the kids and then I feel bad about it all night long and I feel like a failure and I can't sleep, right? I have the opportunity to say, we're going to pause right now. Let me pray. Let me pull it together. And then let's tackle this with the love of that we have because Christ is in us. And I know it can be difficult and I know it's a lot, but you keep just repeating these cycles over and over and over again, you're gonna find yourself a mom who is being able to finally, through the spirit within you, beat mom anger. And I'm absolutely gonna be over here praying with you and cheering you along the entire way. Because I know what a change it made for me in my relationship with my children, in my home, and our atmosphere. And I absolutely believe that every one of us needs to find that. Friends, I truly pray that this can be an encouragement to you, a help to you. Share this with friends and family, other mamas you know that could really use a little bit of encouragement in tackling their mom anger. Mine's a little chilly, so I'm going to go top myself off with a little bit more hot milk here so I can finish up my delicious latte. Again, you guys, Javi Coffee, so awesome. I love that concentrate. I think especially you mamas that I know some of you are in like appointments all week long. You got kids and therapies and different things. Being able to have that concentrate, throw it in your bag, be good to go and out the door or you're like me and you just would like to have a little bit of a fancy coffee here and there, but without it being stressful and having to do all of the things, give Javi Coffee a check out. You guys use my code down below to save yourself that 20% off on your order. 
I'm going to go enjoy mine. I really do just more than anything, appreciate you all being here and just having these conversations and talking about these just real important things that really matter. So I pray you guys are having a great week. I'm just lifting you up in prayer in all of this because I know it's a lot. Of course, be sure I will link the recipe to what I made down below if you guys want to try that out. And then you'll have to let me know your favorite iced coffee thing because I don't know. I, I feel like with summertime, I do want to try it out. I see all the moms and some of them look so good. I was on the Javi website with all the recipes. I'm like, wow, some of these look good. I need to just try it. Is that silly that I'm like afraid to try iced coffee? I don't know. Not that that matters in all of it, but sometimes I think and I'm like, is it weird that like iced coffee, like, I don't know. It's just because it's different and I'm weird. I guess that probably is. I will stop ch chatting at you guys. I'm going to go heat up my coffee, my latte, and I will see you guys right back here tomorrow. Check out Javi down there. And of course, if you want something else to watch, I highly recommend this video right here. You guys are amazing. Have a beautiful day. Find your lovely in today. Enjoy your kiddos and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye friends.